I'm very happy to be here and uh, uh, I can uh, feel, you know, the, the, the importance of this momentum on the single uh, cell sequencing. And uh, uh, my lab, uh, uh, I'm, you know, stem cells and developmental biologist and the last, you know, more or so 10 years I've developed uh, different um, in vivo um, animal models to understand the, the fate, the lineage diversity, the, the cellular diversity of, of tissue during development, homeostasis repair, and disease. And, and today I'm going to try to give you, you know, a little taste of uh, what uh, single uh, cell sequencing has bring to this field and, and how, you know, how important it is um, to continue this um, uh, research to give, you know, really a strong benchmark to all the future models, including the one that we have heard with Organoid, uh, to know to which extent you know, they faithfully recapitulate what's going on naturally during uh, embryonic development, to, to see how faithfully they recapitulate the disease that we can uh, model uh, in, in the different circumstances, and, 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 and to see whether we can you know, propose a solution for therapeutics. And so you already uh, seen you know, this slide, and, and the 2018 was you know, a great moment in the single cell uh, sequencing and, and there's a lot of uh, paper that has been published last year uh, on how um, single cell sequencing can be used to, uh, to uh, get, get us some, some more information about um, embryonic development and tissue homeostasis. And so clearly, no, the moment is, is to move this technique and try to understand, you know, how tissue regeneration occurs at the single cell level and how disease and cancer and, 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 uh, can be, you know, uh, studied by single cell um, disease. And so the, the, the first uh, hint that we got in the, the single cell um, uh, sequencing was trying to understand the earlier step of cardiac vascular lineage segregation at the single cell uh, level. And um, as you may know, the, the, the cardiac the tissue is the first organ that formed during embryonic development. And it, it specified very early on at the time of me, uh, early mesoderm formation by the formation of a population that expressed MSP1. And that will give rise to two types of cardiac progenitor. One will give rise to the left ventricle uh, progenitor and the other to the right ventricle progenitor. And the two other progenitors contribute equally to the atrium uh, um, uh, chambers. And um, uh, we and others have found, you know, using embryonic stem cell in vitro, that the, the, this gene, MSP1, this, this single gene, can promote the specification of both the primary and the second heart field, the, these two types of cardiac progenitor that are forming the anterior heart. But the, the question arises there, is this MSP1 progenitor specific for the first and the second heart field, the one that gives rise to the left and the right ventricle, are they clonally related at the single cell level? And, and in addition, the, the uh, heart is a mixture of different lineage. You have the myocardium, the endocardium, and the smooth cell cells. And are all those cells related at the clonal level? Uh, and, and if so, what is the, the, the signaling pathway and the transcription factor associated with this? And so for we, with Fabienne Lescroix in my lab, we have designed a way to label a single mesodermal cells, the primitive stream cells and, and, and assess the fate of these cells um, during uh, cardiogenesis. And what we found using this temporally lineage tracing at the single cell level, that a single cell cannot give rise at the single cell level to both the first and the second heart field. And they were temporally uh, specified at different times, although this timing were very, very close. It's, it's about half than a day in vivo. And that's why in vitro, when you're trying to do that, since the developmental progress in vitro goes way much faster than usually in vivo, you usually uh, cannot distinguish that. Um, another thing that Fabienne has um, found uh, using this single cell lineage tracing at, at, uh, at, at, at the uh, single cell level is that they give uh, rise to, oh, sorry, to both, uh, so either the cardiomyocyte or the endothelial cells. And it was very rare to find bipotent cells, the ones that are, are, are giving rise to both, to all the three lineage, myocardium, endocardium, and smooth cell cells. So having established this paradigm of lineage segregation using lineage tracing experiment, we move on and, 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 and try to understand what was the molecular feature associated with this early lineage segregation 
transcription in vivo using single cell um, transcriptomic. And we collaborated with Bertie Godgens, which at that time was one of the first to embark into the single cell uh, sequencing during uh, uh, early gastrulation and try to understand what was the lineage and, and, and cell feature associated with me, uh, cardiac mesoderm formation and then the, the switch between myocardium and endocardium. And we profile uh, several hundreds of um, MSP1 expressing cells during the early step of uh, uh, gastrulation, and we could find that the, or the MSP1 uh, progenitor filled the gap between the early um, epiblast cell that Bertie Godgens previously uh, sequenced and the later um, um, hematopoietic um, uh, progenitor that he early profiled. And we could also show that if you knock out MSP1, these cells are really blocking this lineage progression. They don't progress further uh, into this uh, different lineage that will eventually form the herd. But the, the most surprising finding of this study was the fact that uh, by projecting the, 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 the different lineage um, uh, or the different you know, gene expression uh, cells that goes together, we could find the early step of uh, endocardial lineage commitment myocardial lineage commitment, as well as the second earth field uh, lineage commitment. And we could use uh, uh, genetic lineage tracing to really uh, find out what was the, you know, the, the, the early step or the, the point of no return at the early step of embryonic development between the cardiac and the endocardial, uh, the myocardial and the endocardial um, lineage. And so, um, this was, you know, the, 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 the result of this uh, study that we uh, did uh, together with Bertie. Uh, so, I, I, after, you know, so, since this paper, there's many other papers that has been uh, at much larger scale show the, 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 the importance and the lineage uh, segregation that occur during this early step of gastrulation, uh, both in, in terms of endoderm, uh, endoderm res, uh, uh, formation, mesoderm formation, and even, you know, uh, later on, uh, 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 embryonic development. So I'm going to give you, you know, one more uh, example of, uh, you know, how, what kind of information uh, the, the combination of, in, uh, of genetic lineage tracing and single cell analysis can give you some hints about the early lineage segregation in, in, in another tissue, which is the uh, mammary gland um, uh, development. So the mammary gland is composed basically in, uh, by two different types of cells. You have the basal cells here you know, in, uh, in, in pink and, and, and luminal cells here in purple, and, and the luminal cells can be subdivided into the estrogen receptor positive cells and receptor, estrogen receptor negative cells. And uh, my lab and many other lab has used lineage tracing to show that in adulthood uh, uh, and, and puberty, all the different lineage are, um, uh, are maintained by discrete pool of uh, unipotent progenitors. Uh, but uh, in the textbook, uh, it, you know, notion was that all these different lineage uh, were deriving from a multipotent embryonic uh, progenitor. And is that was uh, really true, or it was already very early on uh, specified into different lineage? And that, so that's you know, something that, that we have done uh, last year, and where we label a single um, cells in the developing mammary gland and look whether these single cells can either give rise to luminal cells or, 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 or basal cells. And the bottom line that we found that at early stage of embryonic development, at E14 during mouse embryonic development, all, almost all mammary cells are multipotent, able to differentiate into more than one uh, lineage. And, and uh, as soon as you, you, you start at P1, so just the, the, the day after uh, birth, all basal cells that were previously multipotent, they all unipotent. Basal, only giving rise to basal cells. So with Thierry Wood uh, and Alessandro Sifrim at the, at the K11, um, we performed single cell as, uh, um, uh, transcriptomic analysis of this 
embryonic progenitor and, and the adult basal and luminal cells. And as you can see here on this uh, PC plot, uh, this four lineage, you know, they, 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 they map at different places. And so the, 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 unipot, uh, the unipotent basal cells, adult basal cells are here and a little bit uh, more close to the embryonic progenitor, whereas the, the two luminal cells can be divided into um, uh, two population of the year plus and the year negative population. But what we learn from this analysis is what multipotency is. And so in embryonic development, multipotency is the co-expression of both uh, markers, of both the luminal and the basal lineage together at the single cell level. And this is this co-expression of these two differentiation programs that allow the cells to either embark to one or the other cells uh, upon uh, embryonic um, development. And so this paper was published back to back with another uh, paper from uh, uh, Sylvia Frey group who basically um, report the same uh, finding. Um, no, uh, we are, you know, this is more ongoing studies. We are trying to see in vivo at the single cell level, at the single cell resolution, what is the mechanism that mediate skin expansion during postnatal development, during mechanical force mediate expansion. And, and, and we have developed a, a very a new model in which we can uh, probe for the first time the effect of mechanical um, stretch uh, expansion to understand the clonal dynamic of the, the skin stem cell in vivo. Um, and, uh, and we found that um, there, there was a, you know, a rapid expansion uh, of, a, of a fraction of the initial label clone. And uh, by collaborating with Ben Simon, which is a theoretical physicist from the University of Cambridge, we could propose a totally new model of how the homostasis and the lineage expansion is occurring uh, by uh, postulating the existence of basal uh, prime cells for renewal, the stem cells, and basal prime cells for differentiation, the progenitor. And of course, you know, that's a prediction from the model, and, and, the, and, and as you could see, uh, the, 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 our clonal data fits very well with this extremely simple model. But what was the molecular basis for that? And for that, we have profiled you know, several hundred thousand uh, 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 of cells um, and, uh, in, in both control and expansion condition, and we could find, you know, we could identify the signature associated with the stem cell, the signature associated with these prime cells toward differentiation, and the, 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 the signature associated with the differentiation. And we could also find that only during the mechanical force mediate expansion, the, the, the lineage, the trajectory goes in two ways. We can either, you know, accentuate, increase the normal differentiation path, but we could also find a new path of differentiation that is accompanied by a stress state uh, uh, induced uh, by mechanical uh, uh, forces. And so that's, you know, the kind of things that you would never gather if you didn't have um, um, uh, single cell transcriptomy. A big part of my group is trying to understand, you know, what control tumor heterogeneity. And so what is the difference between the different tumor cells uh, 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 in situ uh, during tumor initiation and tumor progression? And, and one of the things for which we use single cell uh, transcriptomic last year was to understand um, the process that regulates epithelial to mesenchymal transition, in which tumor cells lose their epithelial characteristic and acquire mesenchymal feature, allow them to invade the tissue and migrate at the distant organ and colonize uh, the metastatic site. Um, and, and what we have done here is to use cell surface marker um, to try to identify new subpopulation, new states that occur during this epithelial to mesenchymal transition. And then uh, we could use um, single cell transcriptomic in which we indeed find exactly the same state that we had uncovered using monoclonal antibody, which is the epithelial state, the mesenchymal state, and the hybrid state, and find also different paths uh, toward the, the toward which the epithelial cells will eventually give rise to uh, the mesenchymal thing and, 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 and uncover the, you know, the genetic regulator uh, that accompany 
um, this uh, epithelial to mesenchymal transition. And so having identified you know, this population, having identified this lineage diversity, we could go back and test the function of this different population that we uncover and find that they present different proliferation, invasion, plasticity, stemness, and different m metastasis uh, potential. And in addition, then go back to the tissue and look back where are those uh, uh, different populations that we uncover using this uh, new technology? Where are they located in the tissue? Are they associated with a specific niche? Can we disturb uh, you know, this function? And I believe that, you know, that all this uh, important study can be only done uh, in vivo, and that's why I'm a, you know, a very strong advocate of the uh, animal model and the in vivo uh, approach to understand you know, uh, the basis of development homeostasis uh, and disease. Uh, with that, I, I thank you know, all the people that collaborate with us uh, in this uh, study, and Ben Simon is my long-lasting collaborator, uh, helping me to understand the clonal dynamic of the tissue, Bertie Godgens, which I enormously uh, uh, appreciate and, 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 and for which we had a great uh, and, and still ongoing collaboration, and Thierry and Alessandro, uh, who really you know, help us with uh, many of the uh, single-cell approach for the moment, and Chris Marine. And uh, my uh, other um, uh, faithful colleague at the KU Leuven. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Cédric. Uh, do we have questions for Cédric? No question. A bit overwhelming. <laughs>